This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you need a website or domain, check out squarespace.com. Hey everyone, and welcome to a new video. When you process your photos, are you stuck in making global adjustments to your photos? That is changing the whole image at once with the sliders for things like exposure. In this video, I'm gonna show you the amazing new features in Lightroom that allow you to make adjustments to just certain parts of the image, often with one click. My name is Simon Dantremont, and I'm a professional nature and wildlife photographer living in Eastern Canada. I make weekly videos giving you photo tips or taking you behind the scenes for wildlife and nature photography. Subscribe if you want to see more. In recent versions of Lightroom, I'm currently using Lightroom Classic version 12.5, some powerful new features have been added, the most impressive of which are using AI to make masks a part of your image so you can target your adjustments to just these areas. There are three in particular that are game changers. Select subject, select either background or sky, and select object. Using these selected masks can allow you to make a huge step in your processing. Why? Because one of the largest leaps you can make in advancing your image processing is to process different elements of your image differently. That means going from global adjustments to selective adjustments. This is because different parts of your image need different processing to look their best. These masks have transformed how we do this in Lightroom. It used to be that you needed to paint on a selection using brushes, time consuming and a tedious task. Now, one click. So let's take a photo of mine here and demonstrate not only how this works, but how to use it. Here's a photo of a short-eared owl on a fence post in the snow. The snow adds a nice effect, but the lack of direct light makes the owl and fence post look a little flat. So let's take a look at my short-eared owl image here. We'll start off by cropping this image to taste. I'm going to crop it significantly just so you can see more closely what's going on here. So now in this photo, we have our subject, the bird, we have the background, and we have the fence post as an object. The real trick to advancing your processing is to process these three things differently because they need different treatment to bring out their best. So now we can start on the background by selecting masking and select background. Now, as you can see, we've created a perfect mask of the background in one click, a great feature. By the way, to make this red overlay appear and disappear, just hit O on the keyboard. Now what I'd like to see here is the snow show up a little bit more. So I need to find a way for the snow to be more apparent in the background. Of course, I can reduce the shadows in the background. I can decrease the overall exposure in the background to make it darker, but then I'm also lowering that bright snow, the highlights. A better option is to use the contrast slider. When you increase the contrast, usually you make the dark parts darker and the light parts either lighter or stay the same brightness. To make that snow pop a little bit more, I can add a little bit of texture and a little bit of clarity as well. But be cautious with texture and clarity, it can also introduce a lot of noise. So if you use this excessively, you may have to denoise your background a little bit more. And here we can add a little bit of noise reduction to the background to make sure that adding clarity and texture didn't add too much noise. And of course, adding noise reduction to the background only is great because we don't want to add noise reduction to our subject and soften the details. Another thing we can do just for artistic taste is to slide the temperature slider a little bit left and make the background a little bit more blue, which works great in a cold photo because it gives a sense of being a cold environment. So now we've made adjustments to the background. Let's look at our subject. Under the masking tab, click create new mask and select subject. Now here, both the subject, my owl, and the post have been selected, but I'd like to make adjustments on them individually. So from this mask, I'm going to remove the post using the subtract button and select object. So now I'm going to paint the post and see how well it will remove the post from this selection. As you see, it did a pretty good job, but not perfect. I'll just take a brush here and subtract a brush adjustment from the selection. There we go. Now we just have our subject selected. Let's look at what adjustments we can make to the owl to make it more pleasing. This is a good time to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. I use Squarespace to make my very own website and it was really easy. 
They have lots of templates to choose from, or you can customize pages with easy drag and drop sections for photos, clickable buttons, text, or links. When I recently added Tours to Botswana to my offerings, it was easy to add a new page to my website with photos, videos, and give it some profile on my website with links right to my homepage. You can even get people to subscribe to your newsletter and offer them a free download in return if you wish. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Simon to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Adding a little bit of clarity may give it a little bit more definition. I think adding just a little bit of highlights or whites to brighten up the brighter parts, which are a little bit dull looking, and lower the shadows a bit will make it a little bit more contrasty. Since my owl looks a little orange and warm compared to the cool background, I'm going to move the color temperature slider a little bit left and cool off that owl just a little bit as well. If we look at our owl more closely, which you can do by hitting the space bar, by the way, and clicking the left mouse button, we can see that adding a little bit of sharpness, perhaps, will help uh, bring out a little bit more detail in the owl, even though this is quite a deep crop. Now we've made adjustments to our subject, let's look at the post, which we can use the select object tool. So it selected most of the post, but there's a little bit of fine tuning that needs to be done. I'll zoom in here, click add brush, and I'll just add in a little bit of mask. And you can see here that the owl has been included in the mask by hitting subtract, brush, and here I can brush away the mask that is covering the owl. So here we have our fence post selected. What changes would we like to make to the fence post? I think having it pop a little bit more, because right now it looks a little bit flat. There's some beautiful wood grain there that I'd like to bring out. I can do that with the clarity slider. As you can see in the texture slider, really bring out some of that beautiful texture on that wood. As you can see, there's a little bit more light coming from the left than the right as well. And I'd like to magnify that by making it look like there's a little bit more brighter on the left and the right, giving it more of a 3D look. If I create a new mask of just the perch and then using subtract brush and I put a very broad feather on it, what I can do is I can subtract out the left hand side with a little bit of feathering here as well. And now my mask is only covering the right hand side of the post. If I lower the exposure, as you can see, it can make the right hand side darker giving it a little bit more of a 3D look. The challenge is now that my post has a 3D look, but the owl doesn't, which doesn't look just right. So I want to create the same effect on my owl. Go back to the mask and select subject. We'll remove the post as we did earlier from the selection. And from the mask, I will also subtract the left-hand side of the owl. Now, if I reduce the exposure, it will only reduce the exposure and darken the right hand side of the owl. Also giving that 3D look matching the fence post. As you can see, all of the changes we've made so far to the image are selective adjustments. We've made no global adjustments to the whole image. Now let's see at the end if there are any other artistic changes we wanna to make to this image. For my bird photo, sometimes I like to brighten up the eye a little bit. I can do that with a brush and a little bit of added exposure and a little bit of added noise reduction. Here we'll just brighten up those eyes a little bit and I will create a new brush with lowering the exposure to just darken up the center of the eye to make the eye pop a little bit more. Here for artistic effect as well, the disc of the face of the owl isn't showing very prominently but it's a very beautiful feature on an owl Using a radial gradient, I will just put a radial gradient over the face of the owl, just add a little bit of exposure by increasing the whites a little bit. And we can add a little bit of vignette here in the image. So here's the before and after, and what we're really showing here is by using Lightroom's new masking features to be able to select the background, objects, or your subject selectively and making adjustments to just those and different adjustments to different parts of the image, we can really maximize our ability to bring out the best of the different parts by applying different adjustments to them. In processing, when you go from making global adjustments to the whole image to selective adjustments to just parts of the image, one at a time, you have really graduated to the next level in image processing. 
If you want to check out another recent video I did on Lightroom processing where I taught you how to use color balance selectively as well as linear gradients, you can see that right here. By the way, I've still got a few spots left in my 2024 Botswana photo safaris. Also, if you're interested in wildlife photography, I have a whole course with five hours of streaming content, including two modules on image processing. You can find links to both of these in the show notes below. If you found this video deserving, give it a like and YouTube will show it to even more people, helping them improve their image processing. I hope you can put this to good use the very next time you come home with images to make sure you can take your image processing to the next level. I know you can do it.